You're walking into AT&T and you want a phone with a good camera. Do you go with the Nokia Lumia 1020 and its 41 megapixel peer view camera? Or do you go with the Moto X and its 10 megapixel clear pixel camera? I'm Andrew with MobileBurn.com here to review two of the best phones on AT&T and decide which is best for you. The Lumia 1020 and the Moto X are very different phones and the biggest difference is design. As you can see from the Lumia 1020, this is a big boy and the Moto X is a little more compact. But the thing that's interesting about it is at its thickest point, they're actually both only 10.4 millimeters. The reason the Lumia 1020 feels so thick is because it has that big camera house right here. So you kind of have to hold around underneath it or put your finger above it. And it just looks and feels a little bit bigger than it is. And then you have to factor in the weight. It weighs a little bit more than the Moto X. The Moto X is just designed to be held at your hand. Despite being 10.4 millimeters at its thickest point, it curves very well. So a lot of the weight is at the top, so you feel comfortable holding the device. Also, it's very light. It's only 130 grams. So it's a little lighter than the Lumia 1020, so you're going to feel that. Aside from that, the specs might make you a little bit surprised by the way they stack out against each other. Despite its smaller stature, the Moto X actually has a bigger screen than the Lumia 1020. It has a 4.7 inch AMOLED display, 1280 by 720, so it's 720p. It also has a 1.7 gigahertz dual core Snapdragon processor, as well as a couple of low power cores that we're gonna get into later on. It also has two gigs of RAM, 16 gigabytes of storage, a 2200 milliamp battery, and like I said before, it's 10.4 millimeters thin. The Lumia 1020 has a 4.5 inch OLED display. It's 1280 by 768, so that's WXGA resolution. Two gigs of RAM, 32 gigabytes of internal storage, a 2000 milliamp battery, and like I mentioned, 158 grams. Now what you just heard were a lot of numbers that don't really tell you the full story. So what's the skinny of it? Well, with the Moto X, you have to remember this is running pretty much stock-ish Android. Not truly stock Android, but that's more of a semantics issue. So without the heavy overlay that you typically get from manufacturers, it tends to be very responsive, very snappy. You can jump in and out of apps without issue. The performance is very solid. The same is true on the Lumia 1020, and it's pretty much the same for any Windows device. Uh, when Windows Phone 8 is built specifically to load things fairly quickly. Now you might see some long app loading screens and that can be annoying, but overall uh, when you're switching between things, like when you hold down to switch between, uh, you, you go to another app, you tap on it, and it loads very quickly. Once, So it's that initial load time that's pretty slow, but when you're transitioning through other things, sending emails, taking pictures, it's pretty quick. Uh, but I will say that in terms of overall performance, I think that the Moto X gets the slight edge because of a couple of things. One, I mentioned that it has additional cores. That's because it uses two low power cores to reduce the power demand. So when I do things like uh, say, okay, Google now, that wakes up Google now to give me free hands-free search and voice and things, but it does it with the low power core, so it doesn't use the full resources. Over time, you should get a full day's charge out of either device. When I reviewed the Lumia 1020, I was able to get a lot of time out of it in a single day, and that still remains the true today. But when you take a lot of pictures, it does drain your battery very fast, so you have to keep that in mind. The Moto X tends to give me about similar performance. I typically get about 14 hours of solid usage, so it's a pretty good performer in terms of battery life. That's something you should consider. It's gonna last a little bit longer depending on what you do, but again, both will give you a full day's use of either phone. It's hard to compare the two phones because they're running very different software. On the Moto X, you have Android 4.2. Now, if you've ever used an Android device, you pretty much know what to expect. You have your app drawer, you tap right there, you have access to it. Then you have widgets, you can have the shortcuts to news updates, to contacts, a lot of whatever your app includes, you have that option. Then you have your notification drawer. The notification drawer is great because everything is in one place. You can expand or contract things. Uh, you can swipe to dismiss or you can switch to get quick access 
to settings. The Nokia Lumia 1020 runs Windows Phone 8, which takes a different approach to your software. You also have access to your app drawer by swiping to the right, and it's not really a drawer, it's more of a list that you scroll through. If you want to get quick access to a letter, so if you know, all right, I want to get to my bank app, I go to B, and most likely your banking app will be there. But on the start screen, the first thing that you see when it appears, you see it's a little bit different. You don't really have widgets, you have live tiles, which are kind of similar, but not quite. With the live tile, you can get an update to a specific app. So for instance, I see that I have a notification from Foursquare. So if I tap on that, I would get that notification. And that's an important, uh, important distinction to make because there is no notification drawer. There's no central place where you see updates on Windows Phone 8. Instead, you have a series of live tiles that update you for individual things. For instance, I've got 18 updates that I need to install from the Windows Phone Store, but I'll get to that later. And again, this is something that you can personalize a lot. By holding down, I can remove something entirely or I can change the size. And I say, you know what, I want that to be full screen now. And I have photos here. This is kind of like a photo widget. It shows a different photo every time. I can make that smaller or I can just make it pretty much the same way it was before. So there are some differences in terms of software. If you're someone who uses a lot of Google services, the Moto X is most likely gonna be more attractive to you because it has Google Maps, it has Gmail, it has Chrome built in, so you can sync your bookmarks and things between your desktop and your phone. That's something that's going to be very attractive. You also get a better email experience within Gmail if you if that's what you use, rather than having to use the default email app on the Windows Phone 8. And you have Google, Google Calendar as well. But at the same time, it's important to remember that Windows Phone 8 can sync with certain things. So if you have Gmail, you can still link it to your inbox account. If you have Google Calendar, you can sync it with your calendar. Now, the availability of that might be a little bit iffy because Google and Microsoft have had some behind the scenes stuff going back and forth, but for now, you're able to do that without issue, and it's a, a good thing because both apps deliver good performances, but the more official way of getting something done with Google is gonna be a better experience on Android and what you get with Moto X. On the same side, if you're with Windows, you're gonna get a better experience on the Lumia 1020. So if you have Hotmail, if you use SkyDrive, you can do both on an Android device, but it ends up being better on a Lumia 1020. Now, in terms of the mapping applications, Nokia has their own little app that they have called Nokia Here, and it's pretty good. Uh, it, you can do it for transit, you can do it for uh, just looking up a map, or you can do it for driving direction. It has live turn-by-turn -turn navigation. On the Moto X, it's pretty much a wash because you also have Google Maps here, and that offers the same features, live transit information, all of that. So it's really just depending on which style you prefer. They're both quality apps. Speaking of apps, there's another place that the Moto X comes out on top. There are just so many more choices when it comes to Android. There are over a million apps now, and it's pretty much you're going to find something you want no matter what. On the Lumia 1020, it's a bit more of a crapshoot. I'll give them full credit, they have a lot of quality apps and they're trying their best to close the gap. It's not about the number of apps that are available, it's the number of apps that aren't available. For instance, when I go on the Moto X, if I want to use Instagram, I can. I don't have to use a third-party app like you do on the Lumia 1020. If I want to use Pocket, I can get the official Pocket app. I don't need to use a third-party app. And the same thing pretty much applies to a lot of things. Things tend to come out on iOS or Android several weeks, if not months, before they come out on the Lumia 1020. So yes, you're going to find plenty of great apps in the 1020 their app store and windows store but it's not going to be as quick and it's not it might not be the specific app that you're looking for which is kind of a letdown but it's something that you're going to have to deal with if you choose to get the lumia 1020 so knowing that why would you choose the lumia 1020 and i'll tell you one reason well actually 41 million reasons this camera on the back it's pretty good both the 1020 and the X have cameras that are designed to capture more light and in turn take better photos. But in reality, the Moto X simply can't keep up. The 1020 beats the Moto X not by a mile, but by a marathon. 
it's that much better. And it's not just that it has that huge camera in the back that's capturing a lot. It also has better software. So for instance, right here, I have the Pro Cam, which allows me to change white balance. So if I see something on the wall and I say it's not right, I can change it to different lighting structures. I can say I'm outdoors, it's sunny. I can say I'm indoors under fluorescent lights. I can change the exposure to make the image even brighter. I can change the ISO to change how much light comes in. I have a mountain of different options that I can get the perfect photo. And then when you factor in all the stuff going on within here, you've got the optical image stabilization, you have the xenon flash and the LED flash, you have the oversampling technique that captures more data than you need and then applies that to smart photos that are about five megapixel camera, five megapixels that you can share online. It's a lot better than what you get with Motorola. With the Moto X, they've made it so you can quickly get to the camera just by rotating your wrist in a certain motion. And then once you're there, your options are pretty much limited. You can take a picture and that's about it. Your settings that I showed you for the Lumia, they're not there. Your only options are to turn HDR on or off, something that you can't do on the Lumia 1020 at the moment, which is worth noting. There's no HDR photos on the Lumia 1020. But other than that, your options are pretty bare. And that's kind of disappointing because because the overall quality of the Moto X to begin with in terms of default settings doesn't keep up with the Lumia 1020. I uh, take points off the Lumia 1020 because in the Pro Cam it can be a little bit laggy. It takes a, a while between shots. But the quality of what you get is much better than what you get on the Moto X which doesn't do very good in terms of putting life into the photos. Sometimes they come out wavy. Sometimes they don't, don't come out very good. And that's rather disappointing. So with that said, Shutterbugs, go ahead and get the Nokia Lumia 1020. It might be just the thing you're looking for. Otherwise, get the Moto X because you're going to have more choices, a better feel to the device. It's going to be smaller and it's also going to be cheaper. The Lumia 1020 costs $299 on contract. The Moto X costs $199. So this is Andrew reviewing the Moto X and the Nokia Lumia 1020. Be sure to click the links in the description below so you can see actual photo samples from both of these devices and see how they differ from each other. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. And if so, click like and subscribe. Till next time, guys.